everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really well and a huge big welcome if you're new here. Today I'm looking at how to style a slip skirt with lots of do's and don'ts on what works and what doesn't work to pair with your skirt. And also I'm going to show you why the looks work so that you can adapt these looks to the pieces in your own wardrobe. The style tips in this video work not just for slip skirts but any other midi skirt that's the same sort of shape so one that's slightly a-line at the bottom and a pleated skirt as well. A black satin slip skirt which is what I'm going to be showing you in this video is a brilliant piece to have in your wardrobe. It's one of those pieces that are wardrobe staples but are anything but boring. Slip skirts stand the test of time and they're a real investment for round the year dressing as well and you can dress them up or down. It's so versatile, you know in the winter you can wear it very successfully with a cosy knit and long boots and into the summer as well with perhaps a vest or a t-shirt and some strappy sandals and it's brilliant as a transition piece as well. Slip skirts work for lots of different body shapes. If you're lucky enough to have an hourglass figure, this is the skirt for you. And if you don't, then I'll be styling up the skirt so that you look as though you do. So if you don't have one, here's a few tips I want to share with you about what to look for in a great satin slip skirt. First of all, choose one with a bias cut. So by that, I mean choose one that's cut on the diagonal. This is great for rectangular body shapes in particular because it adds curves and then it just lightly accentuates your silhouette while floating beautifully around your body. Now the one I'm showcasing in this video is this one from ASOS. It's very, very reasonably priced um, and that's the other thing about slip skirts. You know, you can get one on a really good budget price and they still look really lovely. Now this one I got is a petite because I'm five foot four um, but ASOS does really good range of all sorts of different slip skirts as well to choose from. I will link a few below underneath the video description and also there's a beautiful one that I'm going to link below from and other stories. Second thing to think about when you're choosing a slip skirt is try shapewear. If you're more conscious of your figure, um, wearing a pair of say basic control pants will really give you that lovely smooth line. And the third thing is the length of the hem. Just be careful where the slip skirt falls or finishes, the hem of it finishes on your leg. If it finishes right on the widest part of your calf, it will give the optical illusion that you're actually wider than you are, especially your legs. So make sure that the slip skirt that you choose is either a little bit shorter than the wider part of your calf or a little bit longer. Okay, so let's dive straight into my first do and don't and my first way of styling a slip skirt, which is do wear a looser top, but add definition to your waistline. So here with my first look that I want to illustrate this point, I've teamed my slip skirt, this beautiful black one, with a gorgeous piece of knitwear from And Other Stories, which you might have seen before actually, because I did feature it in, in another video. It's classic, it's easy to wear, it's another wardrobe staple in its own right. I selected it because I wanted to show you how you can successfully style a slip skirt with looser tops and knitwear. It can really work very well with a slip skirt. Now the contrast in material with the woolen look sweater and the smooth satin or silk, if you chose a silk one, skirt gives a nice juxtaposition um, and it adds real interest to the outfit. Also the stripes add to the stylishness of the outfit rather than just a plain sweater where you've got the danger of it looking too much like two blocks of colour. Now you'll see that the skirt comes below the fattest part of my calf, so it gives a longer line um, rather than if it had finished on the wider part. It's just more elongating that way. Now these simple black patent slingbacks um, I've had in my wardrobe for years, but they pair very well with the skirt. And actually throughout this video, I will be talking about the shoes and boots that go best with this length of skirt um, and shape of skirt as well. So it's all about balancing proportions. As an alternative to these slingbacks, you could team the outfit with white sneakers too. Not desperately chunky ones, but certainly white sneakers. Um, and also that would create a lovely color sandwich between the paler sweater, the black in between, and the lighter color sneakers. So it would be perfectly balanced. The real reason, the real key reason, which I do want to draw your attention to here, is why this outfit works, is because the knitwear is half tucked into the skirt. So what it does, it's giving it waist definition, um, which is really important if you want to avoid looking too bulky, but you still want to wear a cosy knitwear or a cosy sweater that's not a tight top. So my first don't is don't wear long line loose fitting top. 
and I'm going to show you this in my second little look to illustrate it compared with the first one. The two things that don't work with a slip skirt are long line tops, really long, loose long line tops, and no tucking in at all if you're wearing a loose top. So what you can see here is it's giving the effect of a block for your body rather than a curvy shape. It's just a block, <laughs> a block, a bulk um, on your middle and an unflattering silhouette. So this is particularly wrong for rectangular body shapes, of course, as it just emphasizes your lack of waist. And it looks also as though the legs are shorter and wider too. So just half tuck and choose a sweater that's not too long line. So let's move on to my next style point, which is a don't. So don't wear a long line cardigan with a slip skirt. So as I mentioned just now, creating a successful outfit is all about balance and proportion. So I'm going to show you here how not to style your skirt in my look to. So you can see here that I'm wearing a, a long line cardigan uh, over this slip skirt um, with a graphic t-shirt and some trainers. Now, the effect of the long line cardigan here is to make the whole outfit look droopy, frumpy, and matronly. Like the last point I made, it does nothing for your shape, it just makes you look shapeless. Um, so the solution is my do. Do it wear it with a jacket or a blazer. So I hope you can see here that by wearing exactly the same outfit but swapping out the long cardigan for a shorter blazer, the whole look is transformed, it really works so much better. The look is a cool little number now, I think. So by wearing a shorter jacket or a blazer, the entire length of your skirt from your waist and your hips downwards is on view, which actually makes you look much taller and much slimmer. Um, and also it's black, which helps, of course. The shorter jacket gives more of an impression of a waistline. Um, and personally, to create this look um, with your own pieces, try to select a jacket that you've already got, perhaps, uh, which is not one of those oversized ones, you know. Try to choose one which is slightly shorter and not too boxy. If you really want to wear a longer cardigan, one way forward is to wear a cardigan that's actually the same length as the skirt. For this look, I've contrasted the sultry silhouette of the slip skirt with a t-shirt and trainers, and I think it really works as a modern outfit, and it looks youthful, it was comfortable when I had it on, and it's very relaxed. So my next style point is, do wear your slip skirt as a tonal outfit. Now one of the easiest ways to look really put together is to wear a tonal outfit. Now I don't necessarily mean head to toe monochrome the same colour, but certainly tones of the same, from the same colour family work really, really well. And it's a sleek look with the skirt. Having said that, <laughs> I'm now going to show you a head to toe one colour outfit with this skirt. But it's just to give you an idea of how you can adapt this sort of a concept to your own wardrobe. So in this look number three. So here I've teamed the satin skirt with a classic simple black t-shirt. The one I'm wearing at the moment actually. Very comfortable. And strappy black sandals. It's a really simple outfit um, and it's really easy to put together and it looks put together as well. One reason why it works, and it would for any of the items in your own wardrobe, if you could replicate this, is that I've selected a t-shirt that's not relaxed or loose in particular. It's got space, but it's not loose or baggy. It's not desperately tight, but it's more structured, and the sleeves stop lower down the arm, which gives the outfit more shape and more style. So the slightly wider hem of the skirt is balanced out by the structured effect of this top. You could even add some shoulder pads actually, which would make the effect even more, to create even more shape. Now this works very well with the flowy skirt. If you had a flowy top as well, um, it wouldn't have the contrast, so it wouldn't work as well. I've created shape at the waist by the belt which brings the eye in. But be careful to select a thin belt because when you choose a thicker one, a wider one would have the opposite effect. To add to the elongated effect of the legs, I've chosen strappy sandals. And you'll notice that the strappy sandals I've chosen don't have an ankle strap um, because deliberately I've chosen those, obviously, because this would cut the leg up and make it look foreshortened. And this is obviously what you want to avoid. These little things can make such a big difference to the overall effect. Then I've just added sunglasses, uh, black, look ones to fit in with the whole the whole tone and a black clutch and this outfit could literally take you anywhere so here is my don't 
don't wear too much flounce. So wearing lots of frills, lots of flounce and lots of florals in particular um, with a slip skirt in my opinion would just look too much over the top and it just would look too floaty and billowy. It would create no balance in the shape and this is in particular if your, if your slip skirt is a little bit more A-line at the bottom. The effect you're trying to create is a balanced hourglass figure so too many florals and flounces um, at the top just wouldn't create that effect. So just before I go on to my next point, if you are enjoying this video, and I really hope you are, please do give it a thumbs up um, and a like underneath the video, because that gives me a really good idea of what videos you like the most, and then I can create more of them for you. And also, if you're new, please do subscribe, because it really helps the channel to keep going. And also, don't forget to comment as well. I'd love to hear your views and your opinions about any of the things that I've said in this video. And I share styling tips on what works and what doesn't work, so that you can adapt it to your own wardrobe and your own pieces that you've already got every week in shorts as well as these long videos. Okay now I did promise you earlier that I would talk about footwear and shoes and boots that do and don't go with slip skirts so my next point is do think about footwear. The slip skirt is incredibly versatile, so much so that it can go with lots of different shoes and boots and sandals, but some things work better than others. So I want to show this and illustrate this for you um, in my next look. Look for long boots, as you can see that I'm wearing here, are a real winner with a slip skirt. They're elegant, practical, they just look fabulous. The key to getting it right is to ensure that the boots are long enough not to show any leg between the hem of the skirt and the top of the boots. This gives a beautiful sleek long line which elongates the body and the legs. So as you can see I'm wearing a gorgeous chestnut colour slip skirt actually, that was the other one I wanted to show you here. Slip skirts in any shade work beautifully of course um, and I felt this chestnut colour was just beautiful, coordinated with black and I just love the rich colour. I will pop a few links underneath this video of other coloured slip skirts for you to have a little look at. So I've teamed a classic black turtleneck uh, to go with this skirt um, to show you really that great slip skirts look great with looser tops as I said before as long as they're tucked in but I wanted to show you how they also look good with a fitted top um, and how they look really polished and chic. So to talk about footwear aside from long boots other footwear that would work would be flats such as loafers, ballet flats, mules, sandals and sneakers as well as heels of course such as pumps and strappy sandals and slingbacks. My opinion is that with loafers and ballet flats in particular, it's better to choose the more delicate version, not the chunky version of those, because otherwise it puts the balance out of kilter. If you cover too much of the foot, then it can verge on the frumpy. So what doesn't work? Don't wear ankle boots or chunky boots that leave a gap. As you can see here, these chunky boots, which I love, but not with this outfit, made the outfit look bottom heavy, especially with the more fitting top as well. It's just the whole eye goes down to the bulky bottom um, and the balance is, is just lost. So the, also there's a gap of skin between the chunky boot and the hem of the skirt and this is unflattering because it's awkward and it has the effect of cutting off the leg before it gets to the foot. So my final styling tip for slip skirts is do wear with white or cream accents for a fresh look. I want to show you that uh, in action in my look five. So here um, I'm ending with a casual run around outfit uh, which is really easy and comfortable. I love this sort of a look because it looks it looks put together but it's just easy. So, so this look really emphasizes how a black slip skirt can be freshened up with a crisp white or cream shirt. You can create a fresh spring or summer look with any colour of slip skirt actually of course. Um, alternatively you could team a block colour shirt with a black slip skirt too to create a polished easy look. And to style up you can see that instead of just tucking in the shirt I've tied it in a knot which adds to the casual vibe as do, as do the trainers. I love being able to style a skirt with sneakers uh, and this type of skirt really lends itself to this look. Now, for this point, I don't actually have a don't, um, a but just to bear in mind that be very careful with a patterned shirt because I don't think it would have the same balanced and sleek effect as a block colour does with a black slip skirt. 
Now, I'd love to hear what you think <laughs> and comments about all the things that I've talked about and the styling tips that I've given in this video. Of course, as usual, all the links that to the, the items that I've shown you and the items that I've worn are in the video description underneath this video. So hope you've really enjoyed it, ladies, and uh, I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week until I see you again. Uh, be fabulous. Lots of love. Bye.